President Biden facing backlash after appearing to let a military secret slip during a rare live TV interview. Welcome to the Bald Brad Show. In today's episode, we're covering a variety of hot button issues with you. From Joe Biden yelling and cussing at a staff once again to the United States is supposedly low on munitions. All the while, we're giving more munitions to Ukraine. We got updates on the Hunter Biden probe. 38% of students at Howard University do not identify as being straight. And a school district in Wisconsin is allowing boys to be in the girls' bathroom. Folks, we're going to break it all down for you today. Before we jump into anything, support a true American patriot by hitting that like and subscribe button. Leave us a short, sweet comment down below. It supports the channel greatly. The question for all of you is, do you support having boys in the girls' restroom or a girls' locker room? Let us know in the comment section below. Head over to the description section and pick yourself a copy of my book, Trojan Horse, How the Left is Destroying America. Folks, you're seeing it in real time. You're seeing what they're doing by destroying this great nation of ours from the inside out in the same way the Greeks destroyed the city of Troy from the inside out. Get yourself a copy today. And also head over to baldbrad.com. We got a website. We got a phenomenal site. Get yourself some merchandise, a t-shirt, a hoodie, a Bald Brad Show mug with our logo in the front and the American flag on the back. You're never going to feel more patriotic than drinking out of this bad boy. We're buying them up like hotcakes because every time we do a live show, we have coffee, tea, or whatever else you're drinking out of these mugs. Get yourself one today. And folks, lastly, most importantly, the left is going after conservatives. It's out there in the open. We're asking you to become a member today by hitting that join tab. Become a true American patriot. We got a lot of patriots in the live chat, a lot of regulars that show up to every single live stream. They would love to have you be a part of our community. I would love to have you be part of our community. Become a true American patriot today by hitting that join tab. Let's kick it off here, folks. Lead story of the day. Joe Biden is off his rocker once again. You might be saying, Brad, when is he not off his rocker? Well, folks, it's few and far between because he is cussing and yelling at his staff once again. Biden has a furious temper in the White House and his staff tried to avoid him meeting with him face to face because of his foul mouth rants. This is not the first time we've heard of this, by the way. We've covered this in the past. President Joe Biden, behind closed doors, has a little bit of a temper that sees him yelling at staff and shouting obscenities, a new report on Monday revealed. In fact, his temper is so bad that some staff try to avoid meeting alone with him and bring along a colleague to help defuse the situation. This is reported by Axios. Axios also reported us to us that uh, Joe Biden only works like four hours out of the day between uh, the hours of noon and 4 p.m. So underneath his public persona of Joe from Scranton, who likes ice cream and uses folky language, is a president with a little bit of a potty mouth and a short fuse. Biden will blast four-letter words during his rages, including, God damn it, how the F don't you know this? Don't F and BS me and get the F out of here. I got to be careful with my language, folks. We got children that watch this show. He has seen flashes of his temper in public before, including his July 2022 visit to Saudi Arabia, where he snapped at a Daily Mail reporter for asking about his first bump with the Saudi crown prince, Mohammed bin Salman, outside his royal palace in Jeddah. I think that's how you say it. I don't know. I don't know. Joe Biden's losing his crap, though. That's all we do know. We've seen him snap at reporters many of times. You know, if Trump did that, it'd be mainstream news. If, if Trump was known to be snapping at his staff and cussing at them and all these things, and don't get me wrong, Trump has had his own issues with the staff and his hiring issues, but uh, they'd be mainstream. This is like getting buried here by the Daily Mail and others. It's a silly question, the president said, adding his signature phrase, God love you. The president also snapped back at reporters who asked him about his son's business dealings in Ukraine and China and whether he had any role in them. And that's what we saw, what, last week or the week before, where he just was like, now, just yelling at the reporter for asking a legitimate question. Even fellow leaders aren't safe from Biden's bite. The president lost his temper with Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky in a June 2022 phone call. Biden has relayed to Zelensky the latest round of aid the U.S. was sending when the Ukrainian president started listing more items he needed. Biden snapped, telling Zelensky the American people were being generous. His administration was working hard to help and suggested Zelensky could show a little more gratitude. Hey, I'm actually supportive 
of Biden pushing back on that and speaking on behalf of the American people, just because we hound the guy all the time, like we're doing right now, you got to give him a pat on the back when he does something good. And I love when somebody stands up for the American people and say, look, why don't you, why don't you be a little bit thankful rather than asking all the time, which is what the world always seems to do with the United States. You guys notice that, that the amount of billions of dollars we give around the globe and they just give us the middle finger straight to our face. You want to know who, who speaks a lot about that is, uh, is, uh, Nikki Haley. She talks about that at length in her book with all due respect is what it's called. Highly recommend you pick it up because it shows how the world just gives us the bird every day. And then behind closed doors, oh, thank you so much. Oh, God, we love you. Oh, all these other things. Why don't you be thankful for the things you get? And that's what I love about Trump going, why don't you guys pay for your share? Why don't you pay and stop stop sitting there asking all the time from us? I'm on board with that. So I actually like that Joe here snap back a little bit. But look, you're snapping back at your staff. My question for all of you is there are situations in which I think it is right for the president to snap back. But here's the thing. When you're doing your staff, in which corporation would that not be like an HR violation for you cussing at somebody straight to their face like that? I know it happens. I'm just saying that it's still a place of business. It's still a place where things need to get done. And it is a very serious level of employment, I mean, the president of the United States. But I just don't think it's right to be cussing at staff and then snapping at them. It's already a stressful job as it is. I'm sure they're working crazy hours other than Joe, who just sleeps majority of the day, supposedly. But I'm curious what you think. When is it crossing the line? When should the president not snap or be disrespectful to a staff? I'm really curious as to where you would draw the line if you were president of the United States. I I, I would imagine I'd be pretty respectful for people giving up their lives, probably leaving, leaving certain jobs to be able to work in the White House. You got to show them a little bit of respect rather than snapping at them and yelling at them. But, you know, Joe's off his rocker. He's done it with reporters. If he's doing that with reporters out in the open, can you imagine what it looks like behind closed doors? Let me know about that in the comment section below. It's not just Joe Biden. It's not just Joe Biden. Charles, King Charles says, stop talking. He loses his patient and appears to scold a guardsman after confused looking Biden ignored the king and continued talking to Windsor Castle guardsmen. I mean, the dude's in a tough position. We got videotape of this, folks. I think it's a little bit played out. I think it's a little theatrical in terms of what's being portrayed here. I don't think it's really much, but it's funny nonetheless because Joe Biden really does look like he don't know where the hell he's at. I'll play it for you in just one moment, but let's give a little bit of a background of what the hell's going on here. So King Charles appeared to briefly lose his patience, which I disagree with, when he tried to get President Joe Biden to move along during their meeting at Windsor Castle on Monday. Mr. Biden appeared reluctant to end his conversation when Charles tried to get him to stop talking during their inspection of the Welsh guards in the middle of a welcoming ceremony. A hands-on Mr. Biden, 80, grabbed 74-year-old Charles's arm as they embraced and shook hands then put his hand on his back during their lap of the, what is it, the quadrangle? I don't know. I'm not sure what that is. I'm sure it's the inner sanctuary of wherever the hell they're at in the, the Windsor Castle. He also clutched the handrail to get on stage for the playing of the Star Spangled Banner after forcing Charles to wait for his SUV to drive through the castle. You guys, you've seen this guy. I mean, we said it time and time again. Falling up a flight of stairs multiple times, not just once or twice, but like a handful of times. He's fall downstairs, he hits a golf ball backwards, he shuffles his feet. The White House aides are literally scared of him tripping over a camera cord in the White House. That is not an exaggeration. That that was really said by White House aides because they're scared that he's going to fall over, break a hip, and then he's done so. Um, he, he trips over a sandbag at an Air Force graduation ceremony. This guy is is not fit. But then you have some media outlets. What was it? The Washington Post, New York Times saying that he's strikingly fit. That his stamina is just like off the charts. And that's why you have the view. Joy Behar like completely astonished. Oh my God, look, he works out. Yeah, every morning. It's like everybody can tell this guy is fragile. You blow on him. He's going to go down. He stubs his toe. It's game over. Um, I was watching a podcast with one of the guys from Jackass. I think his name's Steve-O. And they had on, um, who's that guy from Star Trek? It's like 92. I can't even think of his name right now. Um, You guys know, Captain Kirk guy. And, uh, he looks amazing at 92. He looks like he's in his sixties. The guy's moving around. I'm not saying he's super healthy. He's 92. Joe Biden's 80. He's making Joe Biden look like he's 100. Joe is not fit. There is something wrong with Joe. We all see it. You look at the guy from star Trek. I'm sure you guys are screaming at me right now. The guy's name, uh, but <laughs> Joe Biden doesn't look good. So here's the, uh, <laughs> here's the, the clip from what was going on. There's Joe looking aimless. You don't know what to do with him. Joe still don't know what to do. Oh, here we go. Watch his shuffle. Just look. Just look how old he walks. Oh. 
So as you can see, and I want to, I, I want to emphasize again, I don't really see much there with King Charles, but I think the media is kind of trying to find some sort of drama that they can get out of this because Joe Biden's only there for 24 hours in London. And that's kind of sparking questions over why like a full British state visit, like hasn't been planned at all. He didn't even show up to the, I don't even know what you call it, the crowning of the king or, or the coronation. I don't know what you call it, but like he wasn't even there either. And Karine Jean-Pierre was asked that question by a reporter just the other day and she gave some cockamamie answer like, oh, well, he called him. Okay, well, England's kind of one of our greatest allies. Like, don't you think the president should have kind of shown up for it? Maybe he wasn't invited. So again, he faced a fury in May after he decided to skip Charles's coronation and send First Lady Jill and granddaughter Finnegan and raised eyebrows when he bizarrely ended a speech in June saying, God save the queen, man. This dude's deranged. He's off his rocker, but he's the one that's supposed to be leading the brigade and all this stuff, folks. There's a lot of things going on around the world. And this guy, this guy wants to run again? <laughs> this is where we're at today's politics, man. The dude's going to be chauffeured out on a gurney all strings attached like a puppet and somebody's going to be moving his mouth. I mean, I, look, I don't know who the Democrats have other than Joe, you guys. You, they can't show for out Hillary Grant again. I don't know what the hell. She was passing out when she was running in 2016 against Trump. Remember that? Remember when she passed out and she was like laying back and like they like pick her up and like show her into a van. You guys remember that clip? I mean, there's new some. And I've been hearing Newsom has been polishing off his, his game a little bit and actually looking pretty good. I think the guy's crazy. I think the guy's going to destroy this country in the same way he destroyed California. You don't look any further than Kamala Harris doing the same thing. I mean, anybody that comes out of California that's a politician, you guys should be fearful of. Look at Adam Schiff. He's from California. Nancy Pelosi, Kamala Harris, Gavin Newsom. I mean, you name it. Everybody that comes out of California is a garbage, a heap of garbage. If they can't run a state... You expect them to run a country, folks. Look at the state that they're running. Would you want Lori Lightfoot to be president? Look what she did to Chicago. She was only a mayor. They suck. They suck at running things. The Democrats have always sucked at running things. Uh, let me know. Uh, if Other than Joe, who would you think would be running behind Joe? I'm telling you, I think it's Newsom. I'm curious to what you guys have to say about that. And was that clip a nothing burger of King Charles supposedly yapping at the uh, guardsmen? I don't know. I didn't really see it. But I've heard rumors of King Charles being like an extremely big whiny baby about anything like a napkin sh off by like a slight inch and he loses his crap on his staff. So uh, I've heard rumors again that King Charles is a, is a little bit of a crazy O and has been babied his entire life. And uh, look, he's yelling at his guys and Joe's yelling at his. It must be an old person's thing. I don't know. <laughs> Let me know what you think about that in the comment section. Um, in other news, we have this, what, the right, meaning conservatives, Republicans are saying is a bombshell report and is embarrassing and humiliating where Joe Biden comes out and shares supposedly U.S. secrets on national television and world on the world stage as well, where we're giving munitions to Ukraine all the while we don't have munitions. And rumor is we're pulling from our reserve. Now, is this news or is it not news? Because I'm going to break something down with you after we're done going through this clip or in the middle of it as to why I think people think this is a big deal. But I believe the Biden administration had already said this before Joe did. And I'll tell you why in a moment. Let's roll it. President Biden facing a backlash after appearing to let a military secret slip during a rare live TV interview. This is a war relating to munitions and uh, the running out of those that ammunition, and we're low on it. And so what I finally did, took the recommendation of the Defense Department to not permanently, but to allow for in this transition period where we get more 155 weapons, these shells for Ukrainians. Jake Beckett is a U.S. Army veteran and former Arkansas Senate candidate, and he joins us now. Jake, good morning to you. You know, it's a two-part issue here, morning. actually three if you think about it. Um, but w when you think about the U.S. depleting our stockpile of military ammunition uh, and the fact that Biden just let this blurt out, this was music to our adversaries' ears hearing this. Not only that, but Americans should be concerned. And then it begs the whole question, if he's just blurting things like this out in an interview, is he competent enough to lead the nation? 
Well, it's a fair question, and I just I have to laugh because as a an army officer, former army officer myself, if me or one of my soldiers were to tweet or uh, give some kind of a media interview where we revealed such uh, crucial information to the public, we would be censured, maybe even imprisoned. Uh, but here is our commander in chief just blurting out this uh, tactical and strategic information for everyone to hear. It's embarrassing. It's humiliating. It's part of the reason why I believe that the Democrats are going to replace Joe Biden at the top of the ticket in 2024. Um, and he, he really is just this doddering old uh, commander in chief. He's an 80 year old man. Uh, he, he's definitely lost a lot of miles an hour on his fastball, but it really has dire implications for national security. I mean, here he is just telling everyone, telling the world that we are currently low on 155 ammunition, which is the uh, largest and most important artillery munitions uh, that we use uh, in the modern military. And uh, it also really begs the question, um, you know, why can't the West, uh, Western Europe and the United States, match Russian production? Um, you know, that, that seems to be a, a, a running theme over the past uh, year to 18 months with this war in Eastern Europe. Uh, the United States, uh, we're clearly having trouble manufacturing uh, the munitions that are capable to not only, uh, you know, complete the, the, the requirements for our own military, but to fund our allies as well. So, uh, you know, we're, we're supposed to be depleting, uh, you know, the, the capabilities of Russia in this conflict. Uh, that's obviously not the case. As a matter of fact, it seems to be quite the opposite is what's happening here. Well, the White House tried to walk this back. They told Fox News Digital, quote, the military has specific requirements for the numbers of weapon systems and ammunition we maintain in our reserves in case of contingencies or military conflict. Everything we send to Ukraine is in excess of that. So the U.S is not running out of ammunition ourselves. You're the only one of the three of us who has a perspective on this. You served in the military. You understand how weapons work. You understand our stockpiles. Do you buy what the White House just said there? No, that's just clean up on aisle three right there. I mean, that's just, we've seen this time and time again, uh, the entire Biden administration, uh, you know, he he blurts out uh, or he accidentally reveals the truth. Uh, and then his uh, his handlers uh, immediately come out to try to walk it back and say, don't believe your lying eyes, what the president just accidentally revealed to you. Uh, here's what's actually happening. So we, we all, we, we've seen this time and again, uh, it's really no surprise. And again, it's, it's, it's why I truly believe that uh, the Democrats, they're, they're waiting for the right time. They don't want to supplant Biden with Kamala Harris uh, because they know that she's a sure loser in 2024 and she's even more embarrassing in public than he is. So I think they want to wait uh, until the right moment to supplant him with someone like Gavin Newsom, uh, who would probably have a better chance in 2024. Or now the media, they were propping up uh, Gretchen Whitmer last week. Right. So that was the new one. Uh, but now. Wow. Uh, again, everything that we cover here in the Bob Brad show is for the most part uh, me seeing it in real time as well. So we're kind of sharing that perspective of going over this news really together uh, again head over to baldbrad.com get yourself some t-shirts uh hoodies mugs we're not done yet folks just getting a little bit of plug for myself and the merchandise we are trying to run somewhat of a business here you know i'm a i'm a one man show. Uh, get yourself a copy of my book, Children Horse for the Left to Destroy in America, folks. It's a great book for your friends, family, Democrat or Independent that needs truth spoken to them. Uh now, when I heard about this clip, and there's some articles out there as well, mostly from conservative and Republican sites like Fox News, Newsmax, and others, really making this a big deal. And don't get me wrong, it's a big deal. I'm not for the president or whoever is in government coming out and talking about our military, giving away our secrets, telling them about our, our munitions levels and stuff like that. That's not what I'm on board with. But when I was listening to a piece of this, like the beginning of it, and then reading articles from Fox and others, I couldn't help but think, I'm like, man, I know I've heard the Biden administration talk about this recently. And so I had to do some digging. And sure enough, uh, Friday, I believe it was, you had Jake Sullivan, the national security advisor, speaking at the White House press briefing. And again, I don't show you everything. Matter of fact, I probably only pull like four to five minutes of footage from an hour and a half to two hour long press briefings to present to you guys. And so I was watching Jake Sullivan and he, he did say it. Now you have to read between the lines of what he's saying here when he's asked a question about these munitions in Ukraine. And he specifically talks about the manufacturing and how we're not there yet in terms of our monthly manufacturing to supply munitions to Ukraine at an adequate level, which makes me believe is we're pulling off from our reserves in the same way we were pulling from our reserves when we're having an oil crisis, giving our reserves to China and some other people. So let's roll it. 
this area as it continues along its path. The cluster munitions, what convinced President Biden was the right time to do cluster munitions, given the concerns, did allies express concerns to him? And, and are you suggesting that the reason you're providing cluster munitions is because Ukraine is running out of unitary artillery rounds? Is it, is it the backfill that? So, uh, first, we have been looking at this for quite some time. And what we have been weighing is this basic question of civilian harm. The challenge of cluster munitions, as you know, is that uh, even at low dud rates, there are some unexploded ordnance that is left, and that could potentially pose a risk to civilians down the road. So we did not immediately come out of the gate and provide this. But we had to balance that against the risk to civilian harm if Ukraine did not have sufficient artillery ammunition. We are reaching a point in this conflict because of the dramatically high expenditure rates of, artiller of artillery by Ukraine and by Russia where we need to build a bridge from where we are today to when we have enough monthly production of unitary rounds that unitary rounds alone will suffice to give Ukraine what it needs. You so as a that? result, this is the moment to begin the construction of that bridge so that there isn't any period over this summer or heading into this fall when Ukraine is short on artillery and being short on artillery, it is vulnerable to Russian counterattacks that could subjugate more Ukrainian civilians. That is the thinking behind our decision. We consulted. Okay, so he's going to talk about how he consulted with our allies and they agree with us sending munitions over there and all these other things. Of course they do because they're not the ones having to do it and pay off uh, or pay a big bill on this whole thing because let's be honest, we're the police of the entire globe. We got to give everybody billions of dollars and munitions and all these other things like security. Um, so when I heard that, me personally, you guys, I was sitting there like, okay, well, clearly we're low on that type of munition. That's not a good thing, but if we're low on it, then why are we just giving it willy nilly to Ukraine? And you heard him there where he's talking about manufacturing. And I think that they were holding off on giving this type of munition to Ukraine is because we were depleted. We, we, I'm assuming it's all assumption, but I think that we were depleted. I think that our munitions levels are extremely low, which goes into more of a bigger question for all of you. Do you think... And I'm not downgrading our military. You guys, I'm a big supporter of the military. You know that. Both of my uh, my grandfather and father were in the military. Huge supporter of our vets. Uh, love our military. Think we should put more money towards it. But do you think that we put on kind of a, a facade where we make it seem like maybe we're more prepared and battle ready than what we are? And I know we got guys that are veterans and and, and we're in our military like Neil and others in, in the chat. So uh, we'd love to hear from you, even if you're a non-military person, never served, doesn't matter. Uh, your opinion is is important to us. Uh, do you think that's a persona that we're putting on? Because it feels like that to me where the image of the United States and how powerful we are exceeds how actual powerful we are. Now, we're extremely powerful. Nobody even comes close to us, but... Every time there's a Democrat in office, and it kind of reminds me of President Obama, where they always want to deplete our military. You notice that? Especially when Obama's literally closing bases around the United States, you guys. Like huge military bases and installations he was closing down. They want to bring our military to a lower level as if there's no real evil out there, as if nobody wants to harm us or our allies. Curious to really what you think about all this stuff uh, in the comment section, folks. Again, not only does it uh, support the show, but uh, we can engage with each other and, and come to some sort of an agreement or some sort of discussion about all these things. Let us know in the comment section below. Well, we got updates on uh, Hunter Biden here where questions over the Biden probe swirl around prosecutor Leslie Wolf. Here's everything you need to know, folks. Let's go through this together. Hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. Assistant U.S. Attorney Leslie Wolf is a central figure in the investigation into Hunter Biden and is alleged to have stymied investigators and aided the biden family oh it gets a little bit deeper here huh <laughs> folks sit down for this one wolf is the subject of a letter from senator chuck grassley ranking member of the senate budget committee sent to the u.s attorney for the district of delaware david weiss on sunday wolf worked directly beneath weiss on the department of justice and the irs probe into biden's overseas business dealings and tax affairs remember we were told that weiss wasn't given unfettered access to everything he wasn't just able to prosecute what he wanted to prosecute and he said hey i'm not the guy calling the shots the question is who is calling the shots in this whole thing that's what this probe's all about this is what we're looking into because attorney general Merrick Garland said the complete opposite. Oh, you have unfettered access. There's no obstruction here. There's no roadblocks. That's not what we're hearing. Somebody's lying here, folks. Somebody's lying. In addition to other allegations about Wolf's role in the probe, Grassley's letter sent on October 2020 
briefing Wolf allegedly received from the Department of Justice and FBI. The alleged briefing covers information the FBI obtained from a confidential human source alleging a foreign bribery scheme involving Biden, Biden and his father, Joe uh, Biden, regarding the whole thing. That's the Brisma, okay? the natural gas company from Ukraine. On October, 20, October 23rd, 2020, Justice Department and FBI special agents from Pittsburgh field office briefed Assistant U.S. Attorney Leslie Wolf, one of your top prosecutors and FBI special agents from the Baltimore field office with respect to the contents of the FBI generated FD 1023 alleging a criminal bribery scheme involving Vice President Biden and Hunter Biden, the letter states citing information from individuals aware of the meeting. Remember, we were told by Christopher Ray, the FBI director, that the FD 1023 form didn't exist, that it wasn't real. And Chuck Grassley, the same Chuck Grassley that we're talking about here that's looking into this whole thing, that's saying that Leslie Wolf basically had her feet into something that maybe she shouldn't have or was doing something funky here. All these people are, the 1023 didn't exist. And Chuck's like, yes, it is. It's right here. I have the damn thing. Don't you be lying to me. I have it. Then all of a sudden they got caught with their pants down. I mean, the FBI going, oh yeah, it does exist. Yeah. All this stuff was looked into. Yeah. We're looking to do it. Freaking liars. However, the meeting did not include any IRS agents. It says a pair of IRS whistleblowers which is the two that we're hearing from about this whole probe and that obstruction of justice and all these other things. Both our investigators who worked on the agency team investigating Hunter's tax affairs have stepped forward to Congress to allege that their investigation was hampered by Justice Department prosecutors, Wolf in particular. So the saga gets bigger, folks. The information expands. Oh, now we got another key player into this whole thing. Grassley's Sunday letter requests information from the Justice Department on whether Wolf alleged to have frustrated IRS investigators into multiple instances, blocked or played a part in blocking the investigation into the FD-1023 as well. Oh, that's weird because Attorney General Merrick Garland said there was no blocking or obstruction going on in terms of Weiss looking into stuff and wanting to, uh, you know, go after Hunter. So now we have another person involved here going, oh, yeah, there was actually uh, this lady named Leslie Wolf that uh, was putting in roadblocks and was kind of going after these IRS agents. All the while, we have two IRS whistleblowers here claiming that David Weiss's testimony about being blocked on some of this stuff is true. Oh, it just keeps getting... The more we dig, the more information we find out about this guy. Huh. IRS supervisory agent Gary Shapley, which we've heard here on the show before, who oversaw the IRS investigation in the Hunter, and other unnamed IRS agents testified in a closed-door session to the White House Ways and Means Committee. The agents alleged a series of conflicts of interest and questionable decisions by Weiss's office and the Department of Justice that led to Hunter potentially getting a sweetheart deal and avoiding the worst of what the investigation turned up. I've been watching other podcasts as well, kind of expanding my horizon, trying to listen more to the Democrats and the left for y'all to kind of give you back what they say. They believe this is not a sweetheart deal. Democrats do not think this is a sweetheart deal. I'm telling you, you have your fed, you have, you have to have your head so far up your, you know what, that you haven't seen daylight or sound in a long time. Joe Biden probably has his head closer to coming out of his, you know what, than some of these people do. I got to be careful with my language folks. Okay. <laughs> hey, Hey, let's have a little bit of sip of coffee together. Or whatever you're drinking, okay? Whatever you're drinking. It might be some tea, might be some water, a little bit of whiskey, huh? A little bit of spiking of the coffee. According to a plea deal that a judge has not yet approved, Hunter has agreed to plead guilty to two misdemeanor tax charges and enter a pretrial diversion program for felony arms violation. The firearms charge will be waived if he successfully completes the diversion program. Folks, do you remember when Hunter came out and was like, oh yeah, there's there's nothing there's nothing to do with this tax stuff. It's all fake. It's nothing. It's not real. How many times do we have to hear from this guy, Democrats and the media going, oh, it's all fake. It's not real. It's misinformation, disinformation. It's a conspiracy theory it's from the right. And then it comes out to be real. Oh, the 1023 form's not real. The Hunter Biden laptop's not real. The COVID stuff's not real. Uh, it coming from a, a lab in Wuhan, that's not real. If you say any of that, you're going to be shut down. All of a sudden, it's real. 
the reason why this is such a big deal, you guys, and, and it blows my mind is one, obviously the first amendment. You're supposed to have elected officials that represent the people of America to sit there and uphold the constitution of the United States that aren't doing it and are actively in government trying to go against your rights of freedom of speech in the second amendment, your right to bear arms, like actively doing it. It blows my mind. The Biden administration, and the Democrats are going after your first amendment rights to classify your truth, meaning the truth about the stuff that we talk about that aren't conspiracy theories, the 1023 form is real. The COVID stuff that we talked about of the masks not working is real. Like the stuff we talk about is real and they want to classify that and shut you up and call it misinformation, disinformation to the point where some Democrat states like uh, Michigan want to put forth a hate speech bill that's passed the house in the state of Michigan, where if you make somebody feel threatened, you hurt their feelings, you get five years, was it five or 10 years of imprisonment or something like that and a $10,000 fine? That's why we ask you to join the show, folks. That's why we ask you to become a member to support uh, channels like this and others. If you're not going to give your money here, then who are you going to give it to? Give it to other co conservatives out there, folks. Uh, I do. I support other channels because we need to sit there and support each other because the Democrats ain't going to do it. The government ain't going to do it. Who's going to support us other than us and our community we got here? So uh, we'd love your support. Nonetheless, the joint tab is uh, right down here. Or, you know, we got merchandise, uh, books, and all that fun stuff for you. Well, to go a little bit further here, a sig uh, significant junctions several significant junctions rather in the investigation shapley and the unnamed irs agent allege that wolf undercut or blocked irs investigators <laughs> again that contradicts what uh merrick garland was saying shapley alleged that wolf instructed him not to pursue veins of investigation that could implicate president biden oh my god including asking about the identity of the big guy Reference in an email found on Hunter Biden's laptop. Oh, but I had unfeathered access to do everything. No, you didn't. Sounds like Merrick Garland's lying here. Sounds like Wolf did some shady business here. Could implicate Joe Biden. No, don't pursue that because we know where that one goes. Shapley attempted to obtain a search warrant for a guest house owned by the president that Hunter was staying in. IRS agents had a reason to believe that they would find more evidence concerning alleged corrupt dealings by Hunter that implicated the president. Wolf denied them pursuing the warrant. Oh, but you have you have Donald Trump with a stick figure on a napkin, classified documents, going to Mar-a-Lago. You guys are frustrated as I am? Pretty frustrated. I may not seem like it, but... Look, I can either get really pissed off, lose more hair on my head, which I've lost enough of, or I can sit here and laugh about it slightly and just give you the information we know. This is breaking to me, by the way. It's breaking news to me. This is so insane. Wolf told us there was more than enough probable cause for the physical search warrant there. But the question was whether the justice was worth the squeeze or the juice was worth the squeeze. What the... <laughs> We got a ton of evidence overpiling. We got, we got audio recordings. We got video of this dude. We got pictures of him sleeping with crack coming out of his mouth. Him storing freaking cheese that's off a dog's ass. We got it all. But is the juice worth the squeeze? We got a laptop. We got his freaking business partner coming out saying that freaking Joe Biden's the big guy. You got Joe Biden doing a quid pro quo on camera. You ain't going to get the billion dollar loan unless you fire the prosecutor Shokin. We got audio recordings of Joe Biden with the president. Hey, they gave him unfettered access though, you guys. And you're supposed to believe it. Why? Because the Democrats told you so. Holy crap. This is insane. She said, there is no way we will get the warrant approved. Why don't you just try? Why not just try? We all know why. Corruption at all levels. IRS agents later prepared another affidavit to search a storage unit in Virginia that they believe contained other evidence of Hunter's dealings. All right, let's try this one then. ASUA or AUSA Wolf once again objected. Oh my God, what was the reason this time? What was the reason? We don't know. The IRS agents took their case to Weiss, who said they could raid the storage unit if it wasn't accessed for 30 days. Uh-huh. Then who's telling them? They're like, hey, make sure you go check this out like a week from now so we can't get into it. 
quote, no sooner had we gotten off the call that we heard a USA Wolf had simply reached out to Hunter Biden's defense counsel and told him about the storage unit. Oh, what? This is why I don't read this stuff, folks, so you get a real-time reaction out of me. I was... I was giving satire. I was joking. And it happened. It allegedly happened. You can't make this. I mean, it writes itself, right? It writes itself because I joke about it. In the next paragraph that I haven't read, just all of a sudden, like, yeah, she notified him. Oh, my God. Once again, ruining our chance to get evidence before being destroyed, manipulated, or concealed. Oh my gosh, it just keeps getting better, you guys. The more we dig into this, the more we dig into this, this is insane. Holy Lord, let me know, folks. Let me know. Is, is that information, is that segment not worth a liking to subscribe or to share with your friends and family? I don't know what is, man. That is breaking right there. Holy Lordy. Well, moving into the next segment, folks. Uh, if you're still with us in the live chat, do a thumbs up. Do it all, folks. Leave us a comment down below. It does support the show. Well, in other crazy news here, a Wisconsin school district must let trans-identifying student use girls' restroom. This comes from a federal judge, you guys. Again, the question of the day is, do you support having boys go in women's or girls' bathrooms as well as locker rooms? Let us know in the comment section below. A Wisconsin school district will be forced to allow male students who identify as female to use girls' restrooms and locker rooms. A federal judge ordered Thursday. The reason why this is a huge deal is because there have been cases where girls were raped by boys, biological men, who uh, said they were women. So there's been altercations, there's been sexual harassment, there's been things that are going on uh, to these girls in these locker rooms and bathrooms. I don't agree with it. I'm sorry, I don't. I'm not saying every trans person is going to do things like that, and probably most of them won't, but you're opening up a doorway for psychopaths, people that don't think that they're actual trans, they just want to get into a girl's bathroom and do harm to women. This is a Mukwango area school district in Milwaukee. I'm definitely pronouncing that wrong. Maybe I'm pronouncing it right. Heck, I don't know. Area is prohibited for enforcing its new policy banning students from using the bathroom of the opposite sex after Judge Lynn Edelman in the Eastern District of Wisconsin issued a temporary restraining order against the policy. The mother of the 11-year-old trans-identifying student, a boy who identifies as a girl, filed a lawsuit on behalf of her son. The judge's decision blocks the district from keeping the 11-year-old boy out of the girl's bathroom. The temporary restraining order states that the boy has been using the girl's bathroom since he was in the third grade and is entering sixth grade. The boy is reportedly currently attending summer school and was told by school district staff that he must either uh, use the, either the boy's bathroom or a gender neutral option. The restraining order also says the boy is suffering emotional and mental harms due to the bathroom policy. Now, if there is a gender neutral option, my question then is, why must he use the women's bathroom? If you're already having an option for him to utilize, then why not utilize that bathroom? And I think this is more of, again, uh, forcing and pushing the aspect of the trans LGBTQ stuff on people to where you remember when the whole between part, right? You have the men's bathroom, the women's bathroom, and then, OK, let's make a gender neutral one. People lost their ish. And I was like, you know, what, whatever, as long as, you know, you know, give them, sure, there's a lot of people that identify as whatever. You know, for me, I'm not having to pay for it. You know, whatever. Just just have the bathroom. Um, so now that you supply a gender neutral option, you see how it just keeps going a step further. It's like, oh, well, now now they must be in the women's bathroom. Now we're now by force, you're mandated to let them use the bathroom. So it's like you give people what they want, and then you get what's that phrase? You give them an inch, you take a mile. Uh, so that's what we got going on here. Uh, I think there's more to this than just like, oh, well, he's mentally being harmed and all this other stuff. I, I don't think that's the case. If you're mentally harmed from not using a bathroom where you have the boys, you have two options. <laughs> you have a general neutral bathroom or you just have a men's bathroom. Uh, you have two options. It's still not good enough. It's still not good enough. And now it's mental harm. Now you're going after the person. They don't feel safe and all this other stuff. It's like, I think, I think there's more going on with that guy that the, the, the child than just being able to use a girl's bathroom. I, I think there's a lot going on and probably some of it stems at home. So we're hearing a lot. It just so happens, right? I mean, th there's no, I don't think there's a lot of evidence to prove this, but it's just odd to me how every time you see somebody that's part of the LGBTQ community, there's something going on at home. You know what I mean? Or like that parent 
is part of the LGBTQ community themselves, which is probably exacerbating the issue and probably implementing seeds into the head of that child um, about this whole thing. But I'm curious if you guys agree with that or not. Um, do you think, uh, one, that boys should be allowed to use girls' bathrooms as well as uh, locker rooms? And furthermore, do you, do you kind of find credibility in that statement of it seems like a lot of these trans or LGBTQ community members uh something's going on at home where their parents are kind of seeping information into their head about this whole thing let me know i'm curious here that's why we're here as a community folks that's why we have an awesome community if you want to join some of you are here every bear bear and others you guys are here every time you might as well join hit the join tab uh you're giving your money to uh these institutions that hate you i mean they actually hate us you guys look at disney the media companies they hate us that's why they want to silence us. That's why you have states like Michigan and you have other Democrats going out there and saying, hey, you know what? We want to silence conservatives. Look at big tech. Look at what Twitter was doing in the 2016 election as well as 2020, silencing us and censoring us. Dan Bongino was literally blacklisted on YouTube. We have th almost 36,000 subscribers. We're doing pretty good, but you don't think that we're a little bit blacklisted here. We need your help, folks. We need your help. Support each other support other conservatives out there look 38 percent of brown university students don't identify as straight this is an insane number almost 40 percent so that means only roughly 60 percent of students at brown university which i've been on campus of by the way um only identifies being heterosexual that's crazy and i'm gonna give my qualms with the study as many of you know i teach statistics um so i'm gonna break down as why i don't think that number is actually that legitimate and kind of put my two cents into this whole thing so more than a third of students at Brown University do not identify as straight, a recent poll on sexual orientation shows. So this is what we call an observational study. There's kind of two different studies in a big picture. There's experimental design where you go in and you try to remove certain variables that will affect the study in a negative way. You basically try to remove the biases, lurking variables, confounding variables. That's an experimental design. When you have an observational study like this, the most common ones are you just observing. You're just all fly on the wall. You give somebody... Um, a survey to fill out and you just take whatever you got from that survey and then you record down the data you're just observing so with observational studies it is extremely hard to remove biases in that it's very very hard which is why whenever you have an observational study you should take it i don't want to say as a grain of salt but your kind of your your antennas should go up a little bit more because it's really hard to remove confounding variables and lurking variables so much so that it's almost impossible and then uh, those other biases, and there's a lot of them that seep into this. The common ones you will see with surveys like this are non-response bias and then response bias. And I want to break this down for you. It's a, it's a lot of information, but I think this information is really helpful and not one a lot of people actually cover. A lot of studies out there, be, oh, this study, this study. Okay, well, why don't you read the study and understand what it means before we just go, well, that study, this study. And I'll break it down. Is the two biases that I see seeping in here are what's called confirmation but not confirmation bias um response bias and non-response bias response bias is where i give you a question but that question will in a, will elicit some type of response from you um so if i'm like a, a pro gun advocate or if i'm a gun advocate i could pose a question of like do you support uh, murder and then you might say, well, no, it's like, okay, well, I got a response because most people don't support murder, but in my response, that murder could be, could be connected to firearms or something that I'm studying. It's a terrible analogy, but it's kind of the one I just picked off the top of my head. So response bias will elicit some type of response. Another one would be you have an authority figure asking you a question. Teacher in a classroom looks at you and goes, Hey, do you study on my exams? Say you actually do study on the exam or, uh, sorry, do you cheat on my exams? Uh, and maybe you do actually cheat on the exams. Well, you would tell that person, that authority figure, no, I don't cheat on your exams. So you're lying to them. So your data is skewed. Your data is going in the wrong direction. Whereas if that person was telling you the truth in that response, then ultimately your data would have been correct. But now your data is going to be skewed in the wrong direction, which I think might be happening here a little bit. Furthermore, the one that I really think is taking place here is what's called a non-response bias. And you most typically see this when you are, say, at the at the mall or you're at some sort of outdoor area where people are handing you flyers. Or you'll see this at a drive through Hey, can you take this customer satisfaction survey? If you do so, you'll get like a free taco or whatever. And you don't choose to do it. That's a non-response. You are not giving the surveyor a response back, which could survey or, sorry, skew the data in a certain direction. Uh, furthermore, what could happen and the kind of a general idea of this is that you go to a restaurant and they give you a customer satisfaction survey 
generally what you will have is two extremes. You'll have the people that are extremely satisfied to the point where they are willing to go out of their way and take the time to do this study. Or you have those that are extremely not satisfied to take the time and just rip you a new one and do the survey as well. The part that's in between is the non-response, those that are somewhat satisfied with the service. So you're leaving them out. I think a lot of this is non-response. I know it's a long drawn out explanation, but hopefully that we're a little bit more educated in terms of how these studies are done so that when you're presented these studies in election season, your antennas can go up a little bit and be like, hold on a second. Well, what's really involved in these observational studies? Because most of the polls you are seeing are observational studies, a phone call, asking people on the street, stuff like that. So the Daily Brown or the Brown Daily Herald, the Rhode Island based university school newspaper reported did I say I was at Brown? Sorry, I was at Howard University, but this one's Brown. I'm all over the place today. Reported that LGBTQ plus student self-identification has doubled since 2010, as shown in the semesterly survey for spring 2023. 38% of respondents did not identify as straight, and within this group, 23% reportedly being gay or lesbian, while 54% described themselves as being bisexual. The student newspaper explained that its first surveyed sexual orientation in the fall of 2010 and in recent semesters has expanded the number of options in recent surveys to better represent the Brown community. Additions include queer, pansexual, asexual, and questioning slash unsure. With the inclusion of more options, the Brown Daily Herald said the number of respondents who self-identified as gay or lesbian within the subgroup has dropped from 46% in its fall 2010 survey. The publication also said students were more likely to identify with a more diverse range of sexual orientations besides homosexual and bisexual in recent years. While some have said that students feel more comfortable about coming out, others argue social pressures fuel the rise of the LGBTQ plus identification. Now, there's more to this, but to get into kind of the non-response bias, again, how was this conducted? I kind of looked at the study myself in the little bit of time I had before recording this. I didn't see much of how they actually conducted this. Was this just people standing on campus with flyers? Was there some sort of incentive to do this? Meaning sometimes when you do studies like this, hey, here's 20 bucks, here's an Amazon gift card, you'll be put in a raffle. Um, so one, did people just quickly mark answers down without looking at it? Just to be like, oh, cool, I got a, I got a free 20 bucks for a quick uh, response, quick survey. Was it genuine? Um, what were the questions involved? Because some of the questions involved could lead you to giving a response bias, or in other words, a response that the surveyor wants to hear. Yes, you had people from the university possibly giving the survey or others, but who was conducting this survey? And did the did those that were conducting the survey affect those that were giving the answers in the first place? What I mean by, let me explain, is if I'm on campus and I'm wearing a trans flag shirt, you're more likely to elicit and people come forth to give you a response that are part of the LGBTQ community, where if I was on campus with a hat, you know, Trump shirt or whatever it may be asking people, most likely I'm not going to get a response from the LGBTQ community, which could skew my data. So hopefully we're kind of seeing the problems that could seep into this and things that need to be addressed in terms of how this was conducted. I'm not discrediting the study. There's not enough information for me to, but I think that number is extremely high and if the number is extremely high and it's truthful, the question is, is what soul, what social pressures or what information that's being conducted as a society is causing this community at Brown to skew a certain direction? It, there's a lot of, lot of societal questions that can come out of this. I think is really, really interesting because you're seeing a massive uptick, you guys, in the LGBTQ community. As somebody that's a libertarian, and all this stuff, I personally don't care what you identify as. If you're an adult, I could care less. It, hey, it's your life, man. I, I'm living my own life. My philosophy is I leave you alone. You leave me alone. Don't force me into whatever you're doing. I'm not going to force you into Christianity or whatever. I don't want to be forced into anything. The, the problem is they are forcing us, right? As you just saw, they're forcing to have boys go in girls' bathrooms. They're forcing your pronouns. They're forcing you to say certain speech that doesn't hurt other people's feelings. Like This is all force, you guys. They're forcing bakers to bake cakes. That goes against their religious beliefs. They're forcing graphic designers to, to create some sort of design for them that goes against their religious belief. Thank God you have the Supreme Court actually ruling in favor for us. But they want to force you to do things. I don't want that. If you're forcing things upon children, I don't think that's a good thing. If you're giving children certain puberty blockers and hormone enhancers that hurts their, their basically their progression of puberty, I think that's a problem. If you're cutting off their genitals and castrating them and their children 
that aren't cognitively able to make that decision, like that's a huge problem to me. If you're an adult, do whatever you want. You turn 18, the day that you turn 18 and you want to walk into that doctor's office and castrate yourself, I don't think you should. I think you should seek help first. I, I will. I, I want to be on your side, but uh, more power to you, man. Your life, bro, not mine. Not for it, but they want to go after your children. So I think this data is really far skewed. Uh, you can read up on it if you want. Um, just type in Brown University students or head over to dailywire.com right here. Uh, we get a lot of our articles from a various uh, various news websites. We'll look at New York Post, the New York Times, the Washington Post, the Daily Wire, Fox News, Daily Mail. I kind of pull from everything. I don't just pull from one site. Um, but uh, <laughs> let me know what you think about that, folks. Hopefully you kind of learn a little bit of something about statistics. I did kind of a, a botched job of explaining it. I am on summer. Uh, I promise you I do a better job in the classroom of explaining it, but uh, it's been a while since I've had to talk about the different types of biases. There are a lot of them. There's like a hundred different types. The common ones are response bias, non-response, sampling bias. Um, confirma confirmation bias is a big one. That's more of a psych psychological type aspect. But uh, anyways, enough of me trying to play teacher here. Uh, we got an awesome community. Please hit the join tab, folks. We would love to have you be a, an American Patriot here. Get yourself a mug if you haven't already, folks. They seem they seem pricey online, but remember, I'm not the one making them. We third partied out to Teespring, and I think they have a supplier that they do it. But I got to admit, like uh, I wouldn't try to push a product on you that I didn't think was really good. And I'm actually really, I'm really happy. This is the only mug I have. You guys see me drink out of it all the time. Obviously, I wash it, dishwasher. I, I mean, there's not even a scratch on this. So, um, if you guys are having issues with your mugs, let me know, but I haven't heard anything. I've heard nothing but good news. Shib keeps buying shirts. Shib. I love you, man. You're supporting the show big time. Shib. I know you got the logo brother. In other words, Eric, um, Eric, you got the logo shirt. I'm telling you, I don't have, do I have it on me? I don't think I have the shirt in here. I'm gonna have to find it. Uh, there's a shirt with our, with a custom logo on the back. Uh, you guys got to get that one. It's so cool. It has basically a Minutemen militia with the, with a firearm. Uh, it says the bald Brad show on the bottom. Uh, give me Liberty. Give me death on it. It's a cool shirt. Check it out. At least head over to baldbrad.com and see what we got. Again, things seem pricey, but, uh, I'm not making a killing off this. You guys, uh, you might think I am like, Oh man, a $16 mug. Um, but, uh, it, it's because of the shipping and, and stuff like that. But anyway, Enough of me ranting. Uh, pick yourself a copy of Trojan Horse on the left of Short America. We do have signed copies on baldbrad.com. Uh, thinking about doing maybe a discount on that sooner or later just to kind of get rid of the, the leftovers that I have. But uh, with that being said, hit that like and subscribe button. Leave us a comment down below. And folks, I'll see you tomorrow here on the Bald Brad Show.